Hello everyone, Dakota here. As some of you know, on August 2nd, 2023, I received a tip about a potential mass UFO sighting taking place via my contacts within local law enforcement. Many emergency service personnel in the area know of my activities and have followed my exploits for some time. This made it so any request for information on suspicious activity, in this case concerning the increasing UFO activity, was easy to come by. Naturally, there are restrictions to how much my contacts are able to share without potentially jeopardizing their jobs. So, unless circumstances warrant bending of the rules, these exchanges usually took place when my contacts were not on the job. Yes, they could still technically get into trouble by sharing too much information, but there were loopholes most went through just so they could talk about their day and get some of the harder aspects of the job off their chest. Basically, they could talk about what happened, and maybe rough locations, but could not give out names. If the story managed to make it to the news, or sometimes a viral social media post, then the restrictions were not as binding. If, by happenstance, I knew something about a case, then I would freely share it with only the motivation of keeping in good favor with local emergency services. At roughly 10.20 p.m. Mountain Time, I received a text from one of my contacts at one of the local dispatch centers. This particular agency was responsible for four counties worth of police, fire, and paramedics. The text read, multiple calls coming about low-flying aircraft heading northwest, followed by a link to a local Facebook group chat that was talking about it so I could monitor the situation. From what I could gather, the craft seemed to come from the south. It was first spotted seemingly coming from south of Hollister, just across the Idaho-Nevada border, then moved towards Twin Falls. From there, the craft was filmed heading north, heading towards Sun Valley, being spotted across multiple towns before people lost track of it over one of the national parks. Some of the videos didn't capture any noise from the craft until smaller jets seemed to intercept it, guiding it towards its destination. It is beyond reasonable doubt that something was in the sky that night. My personal frustration came from the fact this all occurred and likely flew right above me as I was at my civilian job. But being that this was a brand new incident, the hunt was still on, in my area, southern Idaho. It is not unusual to see military craft in the sky running training operations in the summertime. About 15 minutes from me is a swimming joint with an open ceiling, where one can book a private hot tub and watch bombing runs if they're lucky enough. Just last year, at about the same time, the same contact of mine notified me of the potential UFO crash mentioned in the previous testimony. I was the one who spotted the Black Diamond craft. As I was skimming through the local news outlets to see if any of them picked up on the story, I learned something about my own backyard I wish I knew sooner. Local military branches, as well as the Salt Lake office of the FBI, may have had a hand at killing press coverage of UFOs after the Roswell, New Mexico crash. The Twin Falls saucer hoax was a reported small UFO that allegedly quote-unquote crashed in someone's backyard. This incident took place July 11, 1947, just three days after Roswell. June 24, 1947, was the Kenneth Arnold sighting near Mount Rainier. Arnold had ties to Idaho since he started his business in 1940, and would later run for governor in 1962, between Arnold's sighting and the Roswell crash. Several sightings of UFOs in the area were being given national press coverage at least until the military announced that the small saucer that allegedly crashed in Twin Falls was made by some unnamed teenagers. Ever since then, even with renewed interest in the UFO phenomenon and Dr. Stephen Greer naming local spots in his recent press conference, the local media gave the August 2nd incident the same attention as a passing joke. It is with this video that I cannot help conclude this particular sighting was likely a military training run. Some of the more conspiracy-minded locals would fire off information about the TR-3B craft like a broken record, and perhaps the silent craft was in fact a similar model. My contacts in emergency services sent the incident my way because this was the first time they had ever had several callers report the same thing in the sky. For training runs, the military would usually send out press releases to local dispatch centers and news outlets, to avoid freaking people out, but no releases were ever made. Suspicious, yes, but it also doesn't rule out someone just not doing their job. And for those quick to spit out Project Bluebeam, that is also unlikely. But hey, it is the 2020s, who knows?